Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. My name is Gabriel. Today we are in Luke chapter 9, verse 51. Here you're reading it, you're reading through Luke chapter 9. And it just seems like a, a change of pace verse. Here Luke is introducing us into a new section. It's the longest section in his gospel known as the Travel Narrative, the Journey to Jerusalem. And it starts here in 951 and it's going to conclude around 1927. Some people push it a little further back, 1944, whatever, whatever. But the point is that Jesus here, in his clear demarcation, and we see these a few times in the Gospels of different things. You think about John 2 when Jesus, uh, Pastor Cook says, cross the Rubicon, right? He began his public ministry there turning the water into wine in Cain of Galilee. Here's one of these other these line demarcations. This is what the verse says, and I want us to talk about it for a minute. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. It kind of seems like, uh, okay, just in these days, kind of whatever, just kind of a, a scene-setting verse. This is a very important monumental verse in Luke chapter 9 and in Luke's Gospel, and in the New Testament. It tells us a, f- a handful of things, and throughout this discourse, this is one of the main themes and the thrust of Jesus' teaching and what He's going to demonstrate for His disciples is discipleship. And one of the first things just, and Jesus is doing is like, if you're going to be a disciple, you've got to set your face and to do what God has called you to do. And so... Notice when the days drew near for him, like there's a day that he had a calendar, he had appointments set. These appointments were set by the Father, right? This is a divine timing, divine appointment. It's now time. Begin your march toward Jerusalem where we know Jesus as the Savior of the world. Jesus who has come not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many, who came to seek and to save the lost, who came to lead the 99, not satisfied with the 99 or the 9, but I want the full complement of my sheep, my people. He's beginning that march. And this was the days that were ordained for him. And it says that he set his face to go to Jerusalem. This is like a, a Hebrew idiom, an expression, essentially saying there was nothing that would keep him from completing his task. This is a determination that it's really sometimes quite a joy when you see people get in the zone, so to speak, right? Whether you think about in athletics, at work, and whatever it could be, completing a task, they're in the zone, it's just, they're focused on that. And whatever may be thrown at them, it's not going to hinder them. They are going, it is as good as done. That's what is here here for Jesus in 951. Even all the opposition he's going to come across, whether it's from the religious elite of his day, and you think about the Old Testament prophets also had to do battle with the religious leaders of their day as well. So Jesus, just like them as a prophet, is going to come, conflict, battle. Whether it's even from his own disciples wishing well, meaning well, right? Hey, you know, you're not going to die. Far, no, hey, get behind me, Satan. Right? Jesus, nothing is going to keep him from running his course. And he runs it with faithfulness, committed to doing whatever the Father had him to do. And we see these interactions with people on this long journey narrative. My favorite, which comes in 19, was Zacchaeus. In 18, you have Bartimaeus, the, the blind man, and there's several others. And the stories that he tells uh, about belonging into the, the kingdom and, and what it means to be a disciple. These are all part of the plan that the Father had for him. But it all was going to, leading to the cross. And along the way, sprinkled, just so we don't forget, you know, about 13, 11, or I'm sorry, 13, 22, 17, 11, 18, 31, Luke sprinkling in these reminders. He's heading to Jerusalem. He's heading to the cross. He's heading to Jerusalem, right? That's what he came to do, to lay down his life for his sheep, to give his life as a ransom for many. Hebrews tells us, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. And that march begins 
in Luke 9, 51. Praise God for our Savior who could not be deterred from keeping his course, running his race, knowing that all of his times were in God's hands. All of our times in God's hands. We learn much about discipleship from the Lord Jesus and his teaching, but also even in 951, he set his face to Jerusalem. What is your face set toward today?